So for, first of all, John, I want to uh, thank you for um, having me on. I appreciate, um, I guess, you know, God speaking to you in that way and God, you know, telling you that I'm the guy. Um, my name is Barry Cooper. A lot of people call me Coach Coop. Awesome. Not because I'm technically a, a, a trainer or a basketball player or a basketball coach or anything like that, but I'm a transformational life coach. So wow. um, I do a lot of work around um, social emotional health, um, transformational development with your mind, uh, teaching people how or motivationally teaching people how to um, develop whatever it is that they see fit for their lives. And I mean, that looks different for so many different people. So I just create space that cultivates possibility mm. for individuals. And um, I primarily do the work um, with young, young men of color and young women as well. Wow. But I kind of like push myself to be with um, young men of color and create, you know, a world where they can thrive. They can understand their identity and they can kind of like break the social constructs that have been designed to make us feel like um, we're inferior or make us feel like we're inadequate because that stuff is not real. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, constructs and concepts that have, that have been existing for a long time. And I think that those who kind of like operate and control the country and th that control power they realize that the very fabric of capitalism in America is rooted in somebody being in the bottom third. So mm. it just so happened to be people of color um, mm -hmm. for the for the most part. So that's the reason why I do the work. So my organization is weird because I kind of like have a for profit entity to my company, which is under the NU project where I do a lot of the social emotional work in schools. Um, in the Department of Correction and wow. with young people who are either, you know, have police interaction or, you know, formerly incarcerated individuals. Wow. And then I have kind of like, um, I call it brothers on the block. So it's just like men who come together and support younger people um, and younger men in particular, you know, learn how to read and, and things like that. So, wow. you know, I wear a multitude of hats, but most of it is rooted in transformational work. Wow. Thank you so much. Coach Coop. No problem. No problem. No <laughs> Man, problem. That, that's amazing. Um, yeah, God definitely brought us together um, because uh, that's, that's, my, that's my heart, too. Um, me and Xavier became friends at church. I was leading a, a street team's kind of a connect group at Hillsong where we would go out and just like that's a lot of my background was going out and just literally having raw relationships and like um like just straight up conversations with people on the street and then hearing mm. their story and trying to get them resources and if they want to get off the street i can help them do that and then yeah. from that um you know we would go out every wednesday and then xavier was joining this this ministry called prison in the wild and mm -hmm. uh and and we just started going into rikers island and we would play basketball with these kids and get to know them and Honestly, from my perspective, I felt it was the most raw, raw outreach to inmates I'd ever seen up until mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm, we were playing mm -hmm. basketball, they were literally talking in code. They were speaking blood. You know what I mean? They were like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you want to eat your food? Like all this stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I was like, bro, you ain't going to eat nothing, bro. Like, you guys <laughs> take this jump shot or you're not going to get no wreck. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then um, so it was wild because... That I would show up, I look like some crazy white hipster kid. <laughs> and then I'd share my story with them, or Xavier would share a story with them. They'd be like, oh, snap. And I'm like, yo, man, nobody's coming to visit you that is, like, living a cookie-cutter life, man. Mm -hmm, like, they don't mm -hmm. get why it's important to come and visit you. They don't get why your life matters, bro. Mm -hmm, and so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like, we want to give you a couple hours of, of a week to just be you, to play basketball, but then we want to offer you some skills and, and also just share our strength and hope that we find in the Bible. But um, yeah. but then there'll be like sometimes where like a guy would, a young guy would just be like, man, I don't want to do that. I just want to play basketball. I'm like, all right, man. Then eventually they might like say something crazy, like they're going to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kill us or something. I'm like, man, you better go over there and listen <laughs> to this Bible. 
No one else is coming to visit you, bro. No one else is coming. And um, yeah. and and it was just like this authentic a- exchange that to me it, it it just it just it just drives me, man. Because I, mm. I just think that that's that's what that's what life is about. I feel like that's what Jesus did. And I feel like the more I've learned, I grew up in upstate New York, like in Albany, Schenectady, and and after my dad divorced my mom he dated interracially and so Mm -hmm. i kind of grew up seeing that my brother is half puerto rican and Mm -hmm. um a lot of my friends in high school uh were 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 people of color and Mm -hmm. and i saw how at least in the 90s in upstate new york for me i saw like how the prison the school to prison pipeline which i would learn more about like in a like within the last 10 years but Mm -hmm. i saw it then like how like, if you're a person of color or a woman of color, you got put in special ed or you got put yeah. in this other kind of thing. And I was in special ed. And I was like, yo, wait a minute. Like, if you're in special ed, it's not because you're, you know, devoid of education. It's like they don't know what to do with you. Like, they didn't know what to do with, with um, my friends. And, like, they were like, mm. you either going to play sports or something like that. But education is not, like, an option. So they put you in this group, which is kind of like being an in-school suspension, but you're supposed to be learning. Mm -hmm. And then my teacher was trying to do the best she could. Her name was Miss Sarfo. And she was from, um, um, oh, man. Oh, I'm I'm, going to remember it. But anyway, she would Mm -hmm. teach us the truth about history. And, and, Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, I'm a black woman. And this is what really happened. And they were like, mm-hmm. we're, in, we're in special ed, so they don't even care. They're not going to fact check us. <laughs> and they're, gonna, they're not even going to look after us. And it was in that yeah. place that I realized, like, for some of my friends, they saw no other option. And, like, mm-hmm. it wasn't just, like, it wasn't a movie I saw or a song I heard. It was my introduction to being like, yo, this system's racist. Yeah. And, and because I'm white, regardless of poor or anything there is some kind of stupid advantage yeah yeah you know and so um so i i just thought like uh, i just wanted to kind of share that in that mm-hmm. um you know in this exploration for me i feel that my education or, or my instruction to to christians men women white christians is like if you don't think about this like a prayer life like every mm-hmm. day you pray to god like, if you don't every day think about how can I deconstruct this mm-hmm. system of white supremacy that's within inside me, this insidious, awful sin, like, like you will forget because we have a history of amnesia, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, I wanted to know, how do you, so how do you go about um, doing this work when you, like, talk to kids and, and, and empower these, these guys, to, like, with reading and, 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 mm-hmm. and, and like, how do you, how do you do that, like? You know? Well, I so I look at it like this, and in, in the 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 work that I do, in my I guess my growth as a human, sure. Um, what I realize is that the uh, the social construct is always the conversation, right? Like, mm. so when it comes to uh, people of color in the in the world or in in America, in particular, based on the conversation. We are always thinking about our color, and we always think. And I mean, of course, there's going to be some prevalence and certain things that we're going to have to, like, obviously that we see and we're going to have to, you know, overcome. But I don't. I teach in possibility. I don't teach in crisis, mm. right? Like, so even though I know that a young person is growing up and they are at a disadvantage, I don't give. I don't teach in that. All right, this is your situation. Now, how do you take one step at a time? And I feel like what happens is, is that even. Um, great individuals like yourself who see who can see it from both sides of the coin right like instead of and I and I tell even teachers that I teach that are white and you know they work in urban settings I say don't don't teach in crisis you are teaching humans and they're mm. going to make decisions and they're going to they're going to make choices and when you do that, you kind of like cultivate or you help support the cultivation of our people, people of color, to now break the system down. And another thing that I realized is that what happens is, is that we focus too much on 
what's not working instead of trying to balance, you mm. know, both. Um, so yeah. I would say, like, you know, because here's the thing. If a person is in the journey trying to figure out how to support, I feel like the best way to support is internal. Now, I don't mean, like, internally, you know, I'm using that as a metaphor. I don't mean internally. I mean, I am saying internally within themselves. But what if the conversation between uh, people of who, who come from Caucasian background, what if the conversation in your groups were merely about, like, what have we been doing? Like, what mm. have we been, do- you know, like, what, what have we yeah. not been doing? You know, wow. like, okay, it's cool to be on the front lines. It's cool to, um, it's cool to, you know, write legislation. It's cool to be a part of organizations. But where did the mindset come from? Mm. You know, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Because we have to, in, in, in the communities of color, and even in my work, I have to ask a person, or I have to force a person to reflect on their childhood. Where did your, where did your mind go? to make you feel like you were a failure. Like, wow. what, what happened? And now, if they transition through that and they say, all right, well, this is the social contract that happened. Okay, so how do we now deconstruct that? So the same thing I would teach if it was a, if it was a, 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 a white, a, a one young white boy who was 25 who felt like, who didn't even know his privilege. Right? Mm. Like, we're born in these social, social contracts. You didn't know that you were privileged. Right. You just grew up living life, and then somebody told you, "Oh, because of your skin complexion, you got a you got a upper hand." You didn't, you wasn't thinking like that, you know. So mm. it's like, okay, well, now that I understand that, where did it come from, and how do I now change the people in my community through that? Like, what makes us do these things to other races, and not you in particular, but what makes what 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 fuels the supremacist mind? Right, right. You get what I'm saying? And then that kind of like yeah. removes color. You get what I'm saying? Like, where does the supremacist mind come from? Where, did, where does the xenophobia come from? And when you dig deep into that, then people, then you should ask the question, is like, how does this benefit us? Wow. Because, yeah, you can, suppress a, you, can, you can suppress a group of people for a certain amount of time, but there is a risk for your own well-being in that, right? Like, there's rebellion, you know, revolution, all type of things that could come out of that. So, that's that's kind of, John, that's the kind of approach that I take. Like, I don't really focus or I try not to focus so much on race, and I focus on behavior, right? Like, I know for example, Amar Aubrey, you know, he was killed, and just like any other man and woman of color, like, the men and women who did that or who are a part of those things, there is a fear. Mm. There is a fear in their mind. And that fear developed a demon. Right? Because if we if we want to go spiritual, right? The, wow. the, the devil, what makes him so powerful is that he's totally afraid of God. He's totally mm. afraid. He's totally afraid of the day that is going in for him. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to take whoever I can. So that fear promotes all of the all of the evil behaviors that we see in society today so it's like you know you have we got to get to the root of where the fear come from and when people are not afraid anymore like you're not afraid because you because you grew up in a in a in in a world where you was able to see both there's no fear in you so Mm. like once you build that level of understanding you're like oh shit i can navigate because when you was first a young white boy in that community or when you first entered it as a white boy, there was definitely some like, oh shit, where am I yeah. at? How I'm gonna nav- navigate this? But you didn't allow that uncertainty and that fear to push you to the point where now I'm gonna isolate myself. And then with yeah. isolation breeds ignorance, and with ignorance breeds fear, and fear breeds retaliation. So, mm. you know, just to kind of like sum it up, I I teach people impossibility. And it's funny, bro, that you bring this up because I think about like COVID, right? And the things that's happening in China, right? Mm-hmm. So if you look at it, like the, the Asian people in China have, you know, it's reports out that they're snatching African people or people from Africa who live in that country or black people and they're like trying to kick them out of the country. They're not white. Wow. Where did that come from? There's a fear. Somebody told them something. There was a social construct that things are you know, this disease or something is, you know, you know, in, in the in the blood of black people and the Asian population and the Asian government started to like arrest these people. So it's like it's not it's not just about race, it's just that 
white man in America ha- it, it dominates the system right now. But there's so many things that happen across the world that a lot of people don't talk about. So yeah. it's, it's, it's about possibility, man. And when yeah. you have conversations with your, with your counterparts, you know what I mean? Or if you have family members who don't agree and think like you, it is your job then to shut that down and, and try to try your best to change the social construct in their minds. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Man, thank you so much. That was Yeah, man. That was that was awesome. It's deep. It's deep because it's it's like we have to like getting underneath the, the root of it and everything. So the other day, um yeah, I had some friends over. We're all close, so you know, we <laughs> maintain social distancing. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, no, I feel you. So, <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm going to a barbecue on Monday for Memorial Day. I'm like, listen, I can't do it. Oh no my more. goodness! <laughs> I forgot Memorial Day. I forgot. Like, oh my gosh! It's yeah. like anyway. It's like every day is the same day. It's like wake up, you know, get dressed, go on my computer, th- record. Absolutely. So, um, but um, but one of the things that I've been trying to learn how to explain because I really, really want to be able to communicate this to a diverse group mm-hmm. of, of Christian audience, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's important to me. But I also want to not lose um, what I learned from my, um, I don't know, like my activist friends, my community mm-hmm. that that in, that really politicized me and like, introduced me and, and educated me and helped me to really grow to see this as more than just kind of like a feeling like I had a professor who once said that um he's very interesting he was a Japanese American man but he said that if he if Marcus Garvey would have allowed him to he would have been with Marcus Garvey <laughs> and he was me like too. <laughs> he was, oh yeah I believe yeah. it I said yeah. I said amen me too yeah. was dope. Mm-hmm. but like you know um, but he was very interesting because he felt that like in so many ways, like a culture will see what is the dominant thing for power. And then they, they assimilate or they assume that, right? Like whiteness, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. said that he felt that his people at some point, at least in his experience as a kid, he felt they adopted whiteness in order to assume power here in America. And mm-hmm. he was like, he just saw that as problematic, you know, mm. and um, and I thought that was really interesting, coming from a Japanese American man. Wow, mm. I never heard that before, and um, but like what I'm trying to help um, my friends understand, and and what what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do with this is like kind of introduce people into this as kind of like a how to, like one out one hundred one kind of thing, and mm. um, and because I always tend to feel like. Uh, too intense or something you know mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and and for some it's like i'm just like yo please just watch 13th that's that's yeah. an introduction there you go and they're like i don't know and i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. just watch the documentary and so um for me it's like i had this conversation where people were like i think people still are learning that like racism and prejudice and things of that nature it's like like one thing is about power and the ability to inhibit people, a people group from rising up. And the other one is just like, you don't like something about somebody or you don't like somebody, but there isn't power involved in inhibiting a person's life. Mm-hmm. And I, and I feel like, I feel like people still are being educated on like what racism really means, you know? Yeah. And then once you understand that, then you can understand like, Oh, that's a system of white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Maintaining this people group at the top, holding all power, all decision-making processes. And, and in order to break that down, you have to address that underneath all of it, it was never meant for groups. It was never meant for certain people. Mm-hmm. And, I- and, and it's so awful, but it's also like super sobering to me because then I'm like, okay, cool. Now I know where this started. Now we can deconstruct and fight against it and hopefully dismantle it within ourselves and then within, uh, you know, the community yeah, and stuff. You I know? feel like, so I feel like, um, I mean, I don't act, I, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not like heavy, heavy, heavy into church. I need to actually be um, <laughs> super, super more active. And I, we'll get into that, but. I just yeah, feel like, yeah. You know, this is like more like people, being a 
this is more like I'm sorry to stop, but um, yeah. this is more like I keep saying it because I'm kind of like I feel like I'm a missionary to the church. No, no, definitely. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like it. Like, I, I, it was something that came up for me. That's why I said let me hold that thought. But the I I I I feel like I feel like this. Um, you know, we have to. We have to like so for example with politics, right? Like so they like politics is very prevalent in our communities. Um, it kind of like drives the way, you know, this country is ran. And I feel like people at this point, they vote their interests instead of voting for for really correctness. Right? Like so mm. the easiest way that I think, and I'm remember I'm not the sole expert on this, but when I when I vote for a candidate, I'm not voting for them because they're black. I'm not voting for them because they're white. I'm voting to see if equality is like really in their portfolio, or really on their platform. So is this for everybody? Is what you're creating for mm. everybody? Like even when it comes down to the prison system, right? Is the prison system for everybody? Is the housing development or the financial uh, market? Is it for everybody? If, if you're not creating platforms and spaces where it's for everybody, then I know that I don't need to vote for you. Like, when you're having conversations with your peer, like, people, um, you, it, it needs to be like, yo, who do you vote for? And then you can tell who they vote for. Like, like you can tell by their interests, like, what type of person or what type of things that they're looking for in the society. Because here's the thing, like, even if you think about, like, the, the documentary of 13, nobody, everybody wants to fight against police department, everybody wants to fight the system, but the very fabric of the system is written in one line in the 13th Amendment that nobody tries to amend it. Mm. <laughs> like, we, wow. the, we're fighting political leaders, we, you know, we want to get them out of office. I don't care what political leader goes into office, John. Amendment, the Constitution, the rules and regulation that govern this society. If there's the one line that when a man or woman is arrested, they are considered slaves. I don't care who it is; it, it it's going to remain the same. So, like, let's let's focus on amending that as a people. You get what I'm saying? Because now, what happens is that that separates mm. race. It gives us a, it gives us something tangible that we can collectively work on. And then when you remove that, and they don't have a a, a clause to lock us up, then what do they use? Now they're forced to change. But, you know, so it's, it's, it's those things. And then another thing too, bro, I feel like you're doing the work already. Like, like if, if we're going to, if we're going to operate in Christ, like, I feel like when we, if we really truly operate in Christ, like, he was the only one that could save us. You think, you think, you think what I'm saying? Like, we, mm. we can't we can't save yeah. each other. The only thing we could do is be nice and be, you know, as conscious as we possibly can. I think sometimes what happens is, is that we allow our passion and our ego to get too much of the best of us. I, I'm not, I don't do this work to try to change a person's life. I just do this work because I like to see people be happy. I like to see people win. And as a result, wow. if a person continuously be happy, then they make the decision to change their lives. There has been young men and young women that I work with and I've talked with until I was blue in the face and they still was either shot or killed by gang violence. They still went to jail because their journey is their journey because it's already written and they can make they make the choice. So I feel like I mean you want to raise awareness, it's like yo, a raise raise awareness amongst humanity. If you see a community that you feel like may need a push and an extra hand. Don't go at it trying to stop a system that is already designed for us to fail. Just do it because you're a good person. And when people start getting into that, mm. I feel like that's when we're going to make true change. It's like, yo, fuck this. Forget the system. It's like the system is the system. You want to yeah. be you. Be nice because evil has to exist. <laughs> we're not going to get rid of evil. Wow. Like, think about that. Wow. It, it will never, never happen until God says so. So, so if wow. none of us, I don't know if wow. God is, I don't know, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen the, the Netflix movie, The Messiah, <laughs> but ain't one of those walking around right now. I mean, I don't know, but I'm just saying, it's not, it's not my job to stop evil. It's not my job. It's wow. my job to be a moral impact for those who I come in contact with.
And the only reason why I'm a moral wow. empath is because that makes my life less stressful, right? And it cultivates and brings abundance to my family. God wants me to have prosperity. I deserve prosperity. So if I if if I operate under what God tells me to do already, then everything that I touch is gonna grow. And then the people I come in contact with, whether they want the fruit or not, yeah. they 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 gonna make the choice to take it. We're not gonna get rid of it. Unfortunately, it's not gonna change. Mm. Like think about it for generations. Mm. Wow. We have been talking about civil rights in this country for generations, and still, still, we still see people shot and murdered. So I, I don't, you know, that that's just wow. that's just my take on it, man. That's just my take. I'm sorry. True. No, and that's no, that's real. That's real. I mean, I mm-hmm. I, I have hope because um I, I'm driven by my hope, and I believe hope is a reality. But at the same time, like I do understand what what you're saying, and mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of funny because before I uh, started living, you know, more more holistically for. Uh, for God, you know, I'm I'm in school, like studying mm. to be a pastor and all these things, right? But um, but at the same time, like before that, uh, when I started going to college, I started to get introduced mm-hmm. to like anarchist theory and all these different theories, and and I I saw that um, I was gonna go mm-hmm. to school to be a social worker because I wanted to help people, but when I realized that the majority of the folks that I probably would be working with were people of color i realized so quickly that um Mm -hmm. our cultures are different and and i didn't realize it before i thought so for instance um maybe the book is outdated i don't know because i i talk to everybody eye to eye now Mm -hmm. if i don't that's disrespectful but according to this book i read when i was in florida yeah i mean florida got issues too but anyway (laughs) but um it said it talked about how you know, in some African American cultures or whatever, like looking a person in the eye could be a sign of uh, 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 disrespect in the mm-hmm, sense of mm-hmm. um, challenging them or something. And so I was like, whoa, it was just a small kind of thing. But for me, it was like, whoa, like, like I need to spend the majority of my time at college learning more about this people group that yeah. I'm probably going to be working with the most because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to honor them. Like, like who cares? Like, forget like yeah. what I think. Forget my background. I want to honor them because I realized. I think it was Frederick Douglass who said, "Let mm-hmm. those who felt the whip, like, be the ones who tell the story yeah. of history, yeah. not those who wrote it." You know, um, or those who held the pen, or, or held the, or, you know, yeah, yeah, those absolutely. who felt, not those who held the, you know. And um, and and it was just like a real powerful moment. And so I started to study, and I, I went to Hunter College, and I studied African American, mm-hmm. Puerto Rican, or whatever Latino studies. And um, and from like understanding that it was, or or like trying to learn that more mm-hmm. about that expression, it it really was humbling, and it helped me see that from these different sort of counterculture or like anti-authoritarian mm. perspectives and like bell hooks and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Angel Davis, Asada Shakur. And then recently with like, um, uh, Linda Sarsour and, and different things like that. And dream defenders. I, I saw that dreaming and believing for another reality or another opportunity is, um, not necessarily staying within yeah. the confines of what the system says Absolutely. is appropriate now, because what, what, because what was a threat then gets co-opted and now it's okay. So then it's like, now you want to stay Absol- within the threat. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah. so like, like, like that, <laughs> that is it. In the, like the total essence of it. Like even my, even my people, I always tell them in the argument that I have is like, how are we going to war with a weak army? You get what I'm saying? Like, like, mm. think about we going, we we going to war mm. with individuals who we know through the system we're not prepared. So nobody, nobody has conversations about free education. How are we taking our doctors and our lawyers and our teachers and and cultivating them? If if you are activists in the community, mm. like, why aren't you creating Saturday programs where, where individuals can come once a week 
and just pour into the, the, the community that you say you you go on a war for. Because the hit here's the tell of the two stories, wow. right? You go to the you go to the front line, you yell at police officers, and the next week people are shot and killed. Now I understand, mm. I understand that my people are suffering, and as the social construct was developed. They are sick, but if I don't go heal their minds, then they're gonna always pick up a hammer. They're gonna always pick up a gun. So it's like wow. I, I, and this wow. is my personal belief, and I guess this is why I cultivate things on my own because a lot of people don't believe like this. But I feel like we need to digress from the system. We need to turn around in the communities that we dwell in. We need to just cultivate. If we did ten to fifteen years of just like you wow. know what shit gonna happen, things are gonna go bad but we're gonna, we gonna all dig into our community and we're gonna build up the next generation behind us. So where they are articulate, they're smart and they're able to maneuver through this society I guarantee you I guarantee wow. you will we'll, we'll be different because to be honest with you that's what the white culture does that's what the Asian culture does you know what I'm saying? Mm. Cult, like the, the, the cultures that are thriving, that's like I guess parallel to the black culture because we still thrive through the, in the midst of our struggles but if we turned around mm. and we really just really focused on our being as black people, oh my God, or those who decide like mm. they, they, you see the issue and you come in and you offer your support and the black community in that way, we ain't got to never worry about another white officer or a uh, uh, police system that's going to shoot us down. Like we'll never have to worry about wow. that. We have police clergy council meetings that happen once a month in our in our community in our communities. Ask me how many black people go to it. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm. It's like you know, like th- those type of things. With, with, like with the prevention of it, those things don't happen. So it's just like, yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, I, I see the things that's happening. But you know what I do? I put my energy in cultivating. So when I when when a young man or a young woman yeah. leaves me, they not know who they are. They know what they they capable of. You get what I'm saying? They know they they know themselves mm. totally. And you know, I, I feel like wow. you know that's where we need to go. I, I'm sorry, I get a little passionate about this. <laughs> no, no, this is this is this is great. This is, no, it's it's really great. Um, there's a there's a um, like a community mm-hmm. activist person uh, named John Perkins. Um, he can get mistaken for another sort of Christian leader, but this John Perkins, um, he writes extensively on on um, reconciliation mm-hmm. and things of that nature and like community development. And um, back when I was married, uh, I moved to Bushwick intentionally. This is before mm-hmm. it was hip and all this stuff. And it wasn't because it wasn't hip. It's I just felt like I I just you know I don't know when we started dating Shields and Park Slope and I was like this is nice it's cool but like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is crap like yeah. you know what I mean this isn't like real you know and um not that real means mm-hmm, going mm-hmm. somewhere that's harder but I just I just felt like I didn't want to just be I just I didn't want to just live like some mm-hmm, com- mm-hmm. comfortable white life and um I mm-hmm, wanted to mm-hmm. like do something more you know and uh and so i I moved to Bushwick, and it was around like the Halsey mm. area Halsey stop area, and there wasn't really much happening there, but over time, I became friends with the people in the mm. community over time. I mean, like we had roommates, those roommates mm-hmm. got robbed, we never did, but those roommates and like they were like ask me, "Yeah, why are you still here? Why mm. are you and your wife still here?" And I said, well we we signed up." You know, Mm -hmm. we believe in solidarity. Mm -hmm. We believe in covenant. You know what I mean? We believe in covenant with our communities. And we get this from this guy, John Perkins, who believe that if you're going to do community development work as a Christian, you should dedicate 10 to 15 years Mm -hmm. in that community. Otherwise, that community will never, ever Mm -hmm. see you as sincere. And if they don't see you as sincere, they will never come behind you. You know, they'll, they'll see you as some savior, yeah, some kind of colonialist yeah. or whatever, you know? And, and like, we were like, we wanted to crush that. So we were just like, yo, come over, like, come have a party, you know, whatever. And, and I felt that what I saw is that as the neighborhood changed and eventually, you know, mm-hmm. all of us were priced out. But, like, 
But as the neighborhood changed, we came together in ways where, on one hand, the neighbors were like, "You're, you're, you've been here the longest, more than any other white mm-hmm. group has、uh, I've seen." Like we, we, you know, they were like, normally people stay three months,、mm-hmm, they、mm-hmm. save enough money, and they move away, and and you guys stayed, you know, and I was like, well, this is our community. We want we want our child to like be raised in a in a community that where they see like、yeah. the plurality of life, you know, and、um, you know we want to see like. You know, we want to crack the the fire hydrant and and turn the street、yeah. to a soccer field, you know, kind of thing. And、um, anyway, might be like idealistic, but、um, but it was just like kind of beautiful in a sense because over time, we saw the community in ways come together. We saw that like our parents mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. were like, "Are you crazy?" Blah blah blah, right? And we went to Florida and、um, to visit my family. And we got comp- we we had deliveries right, and we got messages from our neighbors, who you、yeah. know kind of were involved in some stuff, and they were like, "Yo, just want you to know, like, all we got all your mail. Like, you got a computer that came. I、yeah. think like it's good. It's at the house." <laughs> and we're like, "Whoa!" So so we're like, "Yo, when we get back, like it's gonna be crazy." And so they get back, they're like, "Nah, bro, it's right over here." And they were doing what they do. But it was like we're like、yeah. it's right over here. Like you good, and I was like, wow, like, like because the narrative mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. that that's not possible. But but I think because we were just radically like we choose to do life with you,、mm. and they chose to receive it. Like we were able to do something cool, and it was outside of voting. It was outside、mm-hmm. of the party politics. It was outside of all that stuff, and it was just about like. Absolutely. You're a human being. I'm a human being. You, you're fighting issues. I'm going to fight with you. And then we just started to like really grow and learn together. But I did see this too, because one of the community members opened a restaurant, and then we would volunteer、um, on our, our days off to see、mm-hmm. this restaurant kind of try to succeed. And the owner was like, "Yo, man." You're not gonna see、yeah. people in the community buy from here. I'm like, how? Why? And he was just like, yo, like we we just we've been、Absolutely. indoctrinated to not support each other, and and、uh, I I felt like what he was talking about、mm-hmm. was like kind of like Willie Lynch theory. Would would you agree or like how would you how would we go about addressing、um, that? Like you know. Or like, no, is that think, like too crazy or whatever? But I just think it's, it's the, just something、uh, I saw. The, the you know, separation like the, 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 I guess the analogy I can use is like separation in color, where you know the, the fair, the fair skin,、um, black, you know, people were, you know, in the house, the big house, and the darker skin were in the field. So like, there,、mm. there's levels of contention that happens, and then what what happens when you know you put people in a community. You you know you make sure that they don't get the resources that they need, and over generation gangs start happening. And it's almost going back to that notion that you read when you read the book, where individuals are told like, "Don't look a person in the eye." Like if I can't walk past you and look you in the eye and say、mm-hmm. hi, then that means that I don't trust you. And if I don't trust you, and I tell my children that, then why would I trust buying anything from you? So it's like I feel like I feel like as a people we、wow. are. Coming out of that because we realize the importance of black solidarity,、um, but the bigger thing that I feel like we're struggling with is like we've been also boxed in by the the type of businesses that we open. You know, it's like you know we open barber shops, like、mm. beauty salons, stores, like all of those things are great, but you know you're not really seeing no black clinic open that's ran by black doctors. Like we're still trying、mm. to、um, be a part of a system. That is not designed for us, and、um, I feel like that, that. I feel like that is the biggest issue. So, like,、mm. if, a, if a black man opens a corner store bodega、um, because of social construct, a people, pe- black people who grew up in that community, they are going to have because the context we come from is that if I see a black man opening a bodega, I'm going to think that it's a it's a it's a weed spot, you know. So it's like changing. Changing、mm. those now, and I think I think it's、yeah. happening, happening,、yeah. you know, you know, slow, slowly, and things like that. But I had a question for you, if you don't mind me asking.、Um, sure, sure, what, sure. 
you know, as a as a white man, um, and you know, your friends and your peers who are not of color, what do you think? Why do you think they're so disconnected? Like, what 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 conversation? What happens? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Where do they get mm. their ideas of what a black or a community of color? Where do they where do they get those ideas from? So I would think, wow, that's a great question. Um, I think a lot of folks, they're, they're, Mm -hmm. they're raised in fear. And so they get indoctrinated or whatever, Mm. like through music and then through music and movies and culture, they think, they think Mm. it's something that they can consume. Like they can consume the culture and Mm. that makes them like okay with it, but they're silent Mm -hmm. to the struggle and they become totally, they don't understand the value. And then the, it, percep, it perpetuates that, that fear. And then they don't, they're mm-hmm. not encouraged by their parents or whatever gotcha. to talk to people that are different than them, you know? And, uh, and so, but I mean, I'm also speaking like, you know, I'm 41 and I'm also like, kind of like had different parts of my life that were like, yeah, yeah. you know, clusters, you know, like it was like sometimes here, sometimes here. And like, and that, that's what I see. I see that like a lot of times, and I think it's just continuing. I think it's continuing. Like, I just one of the things I kind of hate. I don't know. I might get in trouble for this, but one of the things I kind of hate is this like notion of, um, in a sense, mm-hmm. like kind of like white feminism. Mm-hmm. Now I might be wrong about this, but to me, a lot of the times it seems like, it seems like, in a way, white feminism is sort of like can we just like address this issue so that mm-hmm. I can like go back on my phone, you know? And, and I'm like, yo, no, like mm-hmm. this issue should got disrupt you, your you. life. <laughs> you know, like, like be happy, but at the same time, like, mm-hmm. let your life be disrupted. Be okay mm-hmm. with uncomfortability. Be okay with like losing something mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. someone else can have, you know? And, and, um, I I just think that like my peers, they're not really educated in the value of that unless they're a part of a counterculture that Mm. they find through like punk or Mm. music or, or art. But like, if they're not in that, they're just, they're just kind of trained to kind of do what will help them succeed or whatever. And it just perpetuates the same thing. And so, and so like you might've been conscious or critical at high school or, you know, but it was a phase and you lost it by Take the end of college because now you want to like, get... yeah, yeah. And so, um, so that's, that's, that's kind of like what I think. But, um, and, and the reason I say that about music too is because years ago I saw this film at NYU called Beyond the Beat and mm-hmm. Rhyme and it featured Jadakiss. And Jadakiss said, I can write conscious raps all day, but the people that pay my checks and provide and put sneakers on my kids' feet. You know, these kids mm-hmm. in the suburbs want to hear violence. They want to hear that, mm-hmm. and they pay the check, so I give them it. I give them that violence. And I think that, like, that's the problem, too, is that, like, part of, like, educating my peers is helping them see that that's, that's problematic. Like, we want to we wanna hear something, but also, like, stop championing or 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 or, like... I I would say um voyeuristically like no, I hear you I, hear I don't know saying. man like 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 having some kind of sick it's like it's, it's like it's like, it's like, it's like the, the right like being in the room with, like with a, when 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 the gladiators are fighting so it's like because you know they're not experienced and I guess the quote unquote imagery of like what it what what it means to be I guess hard right like in all or experiencing that level of aggression they they actually get a taste of it through the music so it's not necessarily so jd kids just happens to be the individual who makes the music but it's about the the idea of what jd kids is saying and less about who's saying it yeah that makes sense that makes yeah. sense yeah 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 that's real bro um that's man real. yeah that's real. Well, like, i, I have say, like <laughs> that just opened my eyes to something. Um, so what happens is, is that because 
especially the music industry is like this global market now. People of color now make the music um, so that that way they can feed their family. So yeah, even if I'm a rapper, mm. I don't necessarily know where the money coming from. If I'm thinking like if I'm a young black rapper and I don't necessarily, all I know that is money available and how people make the money that I see come before me, they talk about guns and killing. I'm going to emulate that because I want to make the check. But then on the flip side, on the other side of the dollar, there's young people who are white. It's like, damn, like, I'm tired of suburbia. I need a little edge. They young. They don't know how to get it, so they hear this music that they can kind of, like, have an alter ego, and they buy it, and it just keeps fueling each other. And then the middle man, that adult, who was yeah. like, all right, well, we gonna, this is how we're going to make money. It, that, that's powerful, man. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, they capitalize on that, and it's, and, and it's been going, it's it's been going on since the beginning. Like you know, like trying to, oh, man, I forgot what what I'm, like consuming or being a consumer, of, of a cultural expression that is, that comes mm-hmm. out of a real place, but then marketing it, as like, some kind of weird sadistic experience. For a person that has never experienced that at all, wow. and they want to say they have, and it's just like it's just like, bro, that's not your experience. Like, s- like stop it. Like, cool. If you're gonna like this, then like, do yourself a favor and like try and understand that more, and at least educate that this is this is a song, yeah. but it's not like your reality. You know what I mean? And the same thing too goes for like, you know, a lot of times when you hear background interviews and stuff, people are like, man, I dropped, I, I dropped these bars and you know what I mean? And that, and that, and it gave me a, a living. Yeah. But like, I live this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't live like that. I live this way. Yeah. I got, I got out, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. I sell vodka absolutely. Now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I, I, I have a closing line, you know? And so, and I think that's like important to know too. And I just, and I think like for me too, like there's, there's a laziness. There's a, such a laziness with um I, I find it inspiring and life giving. Mm. Like it's like energy, you know, like an energon cube that mm-hmm. you put inside a an autobot, yeah, yeah, you know, like in Transformers. Energy, absolutely. And, um, <laughs> and like Yeah, yeah, it's like an energy, yes. you know. The learning and growing. That's why I started this podcast in the first place. It's like if you challenge your paradigms and your socializations. You can expand your mind and believe something different, specifically when it comes to understanding this system, the racism and these kinds of things, you know, these issues, especially for me as a Christian, because I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I want to bring together, I want to bring together the truth of what Mm -hmm. I've learned in being an activist and the truth in having like a very tangible existential personal mm-hmm. relationship with I believe God and how that's changed my life but it given but it puts mm. a responsibility on me on how I respond to the world through this world view and if my world view is white christianity mm. then I'm good for nothing but if it's an actual plural yeah. like Jesus was a man of yeah. color <laughs> you know what I mean come on people he was a Palestinian yeah, no, Jew. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but um, but anyway, I just yeah, I hope that that answered the question. I'm just we're, yeah, we're yeah, down yeah, I to, see, I um, see. I got like five minutes left. So, so I wanted to um, you know, man, I just really enjoyed this. And absolutely, brother, if, I love if you want to do it again uh, another like, time, um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's let's do this. And if you know. Whatever conversations, whatever the topics you want to talk about, man, just call me up, man. I, I you know, I, I'm there. I think the platform and what you're creating is phenomenal. Um, yeah, and I and I appreciate you, you know, calling me and having me on. And I hope that we can dwell in other spaces and kind of like work side by side to do this hue man work. Um, when yeah. I hear the word hue, when I hear the word hue and man, I yeah. think of color, and I think of you know, like like. Yeah, wow. absolutely. So like hubris. Um, yeah, I'm 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 here, John. Wow. You know, thank you for having wow. me. Wow.